my name is Jake Seymour and welcome back to Kickstart. Today we are going to be going over data types, specifically integers, doubles, booleans, and strings, the most fundamental data types within Java. So first of all, what are data types? Data types are split up into two categories, either primitive or non-primitive. Typically primitive are direct values containing values of that type. So for example, we're going to be going integers, and integers are of course represented by integers. Whereas non-primitive usually reference and one example would be a string, and I'll explain this when we get into strings. So essentially, we, there are many data types, but we're going to be going over the four main ones, of course, being the Boolean, integer, double, and string, each within their own respective categories. Remember, data types specify the size and type of values that can be stored within an identifier. Now on to integers. Integers, as stated before, are primitive data type. And they're the most fundamental way to declare numerical values. So for example, later on, if you're creating a program that, for example, calculate the cost of apples that you purchase at the grocery store and you want to show the user how many apples you purchased you would of course have to use an integer to represent that value and just like in math an integer is a whole number either negative or positive or including zero so how you would format this is you would have of course integer being the data type in the first part of the line of code and then you would have a name following it and this name can be anything as long as it's not a keyword which I'll go on in a second and of course, you would put an equal sign. And in Java, you always use equal signs with data types so that you can indicate, of course, what the value is assigned to. In this case, let's say it's just one. Then we have a double, which is also another way to declare numerical values. And this is under the floating category. The floating category typically refers to a floating point, which usually is related to decimals. So unlike an integer, you can have decimals here. And they can store up to 16 decimal places, which is actually pretty impressive. So for example, let's say you want to store 2.1, 3.123, it goes on and on and on is what you could do with doubles. This is usually for more precise calculations. And of course the format is down below. You would have double temperature equals 23.12 and of course there would be 0 .12 because you're using a double in this case. And as stated before, these are some keyword examples. You have to make sure that when you come up with a name for your data type that it does not match these because these are usually typical functions that will have the program run a specific task. Now onto Booleans, once again, these are a primitive data type, and they're usually represented by two values, that being true or false. So you can think of a true or false test where you only have two options, and of course there is no in between. So one thing that you must know is that if you do not assign a value, it will default to false. And for example, when you're declaring a Boolean, you would of course put the data type being Boolean, and then the name, in this case, you can give it a simple name such as B. Also remember that it doesn't really matter how you name your data types as long as you make sure that they don't have keyword examples within it and also make sure that when you name a data type you don't put a number as your first character it can you can have a character after the first one but as long as you don't have it it won't interfere with your program so then after that you put equals false and then of course I wrote another one below just to give an example of when it's equal to true finally we have strings and of course strings are non-primitive data types meaning that they refer to an object so whereas with integers and booleans, there's usually a specific value assigned to that data type, here it's more free. So they're treated as objects, and they're usually a sequence of characters. So for example, you could have ABC, hello there, and even just a random mix of characters. Typically when you're using string, you're trying to give a message to the user. So for example, you'd be asking them a question, you would be writing a message. So as you can see in the declaration form below, you have string, and the name would be introduction equals hello, good to see you. So the user understands what's going on. This is sort of a connection between the computer and the user or, of course, the programmer. And then here's another function below the declaration, and this is system.out.println, and this usually means system print lined. And this is very important because this is what the user is going to be able to see. So even though you have string introduction equals hello, good to see you, the user is not going to be able to see this unless you write a line of code that enables it to be seen on the screen or monitor. So for, once again, system.outprint.println allows the user to see your string. So in this case, I put introduction within the parentheses so that it would show hello, good to see you. And remember that the equal sign is there. That shows that the string or data type is related to that value that you give it, or of course, in this case, pattern of characters. So it would say, hello, good to see you on the screen. And some things that you must absolutely remember when writing lines of code involving string is that the word string is capitalized unlike the other data types. Also, it's important to remember that usually the message that you're conveying within a string as in the assigned value, it has to be within parentheses or else it won't come up or the, you'll have an error. So 
here are the concepts that we went over today. Hopefully you'll be able to answer all of these questions yourself. And we look forward to seeing you again in our next lesson.